Hello everyone and welcome to Fellowship of the Spirit. Today the precept that we are going to address is a seven part series and it's the Feast of the Lord. And it's out of Leviticus the 23rd chapter. The first feast that we are going to address is the Lord's Sabbath day. And we're going to start this off in Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23, and brothers, start us off in verse 1. 23 and 1, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. So these are the feast of the Lord, not the feast of the Jews, not the feast of the Israelites. These are the feast of the Lord. Go ahead, brother. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. Ye shall do no, sir, ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwelling. Now the feast of the Sabbath day, as the Lord called it in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, the Sabbath day is on its seven-day cycle that hasn't changed from the creation. Okay? So every seven days, you have a Sabbath. You have a Sabbath to rest, the weekly Sabbath. And we'll address the other feasts when we get to them. Let's continue. Let's go to Isaiah, the 56th chapter. So the first feast that the Lord lays out is the Sabbath day. Isaiah 56. Isaiah 56. And by the way, sisters and brothers, what we're going to do in this seven-part series, we're not going to do the do's and don'ts and all this. And when you go to a Sabbath class and you get ready to keep the feast, they'll have a long lesson and everything. We're just going to go straight to the point and let you know what this day points toward. Because in Colossians, the second chapter, verse 17, it says that these feasts are a shadow of things to come. And they all point to Christ Jesus. Isaiah 56 and verse 1, brother, go ahead. Thus saith the Lord, keep ye judgment, and do justice. For my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Yes, sir. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on Uh-huh. That keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. He took hold of the covenant, and he's keeping the Lord's Sabbath day. Go ahead. Verse 3. Neither let the son of the stranger that hath joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, uh -huh. The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. So don't let the stranger... Anyone other than an Israelite, a physical Israelite, anyone other than that that has joined himself to the Lord, that has taken hold of the covenant of salvation, don't let him say that the Lord has utterly separated me from the nation of Israel. In the New Testament, it calls it the commonwealth of Israel. And you have to become part of the commonwealth of Israel in order to have a shot at salvation. Skip down to 6 and continue, brother. Also the son of the stranger, they joined themselves to the Lord to serve him. And to love the name of the Lord. To serve him and to love the name of the Lord. Go ahead, brother. To be his servants. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and taketh hold of my covenant. Everyone that keeps the Sabbath day, takes hold of it, and keeps it from polluting it, and takes hold of the covenant. Go ahead, brother. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain. And make them joyful in my house of prayer. Because it's not just for the nation of Israel. It's for anyone that wants to serve the Lord. Go ahead, brother. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. Uh-huh. For mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. Yes, sir. One more verse. The Lord God, which gathereth the outcasts of Israel, saith, Yet will I gather others to him, beside those that are gathered unto him. So it's not just about for Israel. It's for all nations. Go over to Isaiah 58 chapter and pick it up at verse 13, sir. The stranger also that joins himself to the Lord, that takes hold of the covenant and keeps the Sabbath day from polluting it. The seventh day Sabbath. Got nothing to do with Sunday worship. In fact, that's not even scriptural. Go ahead, brother. If thou turn away thy foot from doing the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on, on my holy day. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day. This is the Lord talking. Go ahead, brother. And call the Sabbath a delight. And call the Sabbath a delight. In other words, you keep it with the right spirit. Not just to keep it, can't wait for the sun to go down. Go ahead, brother. The holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure nor speaking thine own words. And that just means doing your own pleasure is work. Speaking your own words is making plans. The Sabbath day is a day that you are supposed to set aside from all the other days and dedicate it to the Lord. You're resting on the Sabbath day. You're having a holy convocation. You're furthering your knowledge of God's will for you on this day. 
You're gathering with brethren if you can. And you're rightly dividing and you're showing yourself approved before God by trying to find out everything you can about how to serve Him. That's what the Sabbath day is about. Laying aside what you can do the rest of the week. Go ahead, brother. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken. Yes, sir. Let's go to Second Peter, the third chapter. Second Peter, the third chapter. So now we see that the Sabbath day is important to the Lord. It's part of the covenant. The Lord went as far as to say that it was actually a perpetual covenant, so it's a covenant inside the covenant, and it's forever, it's perpetual, it's throughout all generations. Second Peter, the third chapter. Second Peter, the third chapter. Now let's look at what the Sabbath day points toward, because when you keep the Sabbath day, you keep it with understanding. You know what it points toward, because these feasts are a shadow of things to come, and they all point toward Christ. Second Peter 3 and verse 8, brother, go ahead. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. One day is as the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord looks as one day to Him, it's a thousand years long. Let's go to Revelation, the 20th chapter. Revelation, the 20th chapter. Revelation 20. Revelation 20. And brother, when you get there, we're going to pick it up at verse 4. 20 and 4, go ahead. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Go ahead, brother. What Verse, about the rest of the dead? Verse 5. But the rest of the... But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. A lot of people don't know there's two resurrections. This is the first resurrection. All those that God deems worthy to come up in the first resurrection to live and reign with Him. Go ahead, brother. Are you done with verse 6? Uh, no. Go ahead, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Uh -huh. On such the second death hath no power. In other words, you don't have a judgment anymore. You've already been judged righteous to make the first resurrection. You were shewing for the Father's kingdom. Go ahead. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. For a thousand years, because a day to the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. We're getting ready to do a lesson called the boundaries of man. We'll explain that with the timeline then. But for now, you know that this millennial reign is a thousand years long. Let's go to Hebrews, the third chapter. Hebrews, the third chapter. Hebrews 3. Hebrews 3. So that rest is actually that thousand year reign with Christ Jesus. But let's break this down and make it plain. Hebrews 3, brother, and pick it up at verse 14. 3 and 14. For we are made partakers of Christ. If we hold the the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. Those that endure until the end shall be saved. Go ahead, brother. While it is said, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. You go to 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, and it will show you exactly how they provoked Christ. And in doing so, it will show you where you to go back, and you can read it on your own. But that's for another time. Go ahead, brother. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? Uh -huh. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? And believed not. Why did they believe not? Because what's faith? Belief. And if you believe what Christ says, you become obedient to it. We know that was Jesus in the Old Testament dealing with Moses. So we see that it was, to them he swore that they could not enter into his rest, but to them that believe not. The Lord always gives us a physical to point toward a spiritual. Go ahead, brother. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. So they couldn't go into the land because they didn't believe, and they didn't show their belief by their works. They weren't obedient to God's voice. Let's go to Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Hebrews 4, and brother, pick it up at verse 8. You should already be there. 4 and 8, go ahead. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. Now, if Jesus would have given them rest in the wilderness, would have let them make the kingdom, he wouldn't talk about a kingdom in the future. It would already be here. You die, you go to the kingdom. 
But he didn't talk like that. Go ahead, brother. Verse 9. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people yes, of sir. God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as God did from his. And when you enter into rest, like when you lay down at night, you're not still working. You cease from your works. The Lord is showing you a physical to make the spiritual point, to drive it home. Go ahead, brother. Verse 11. Let us labor, therefore, and enter into that rest. To enter into which rest? That thousand-day millennial reign with Christ Jesus. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest. Go ahead. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Lest any man fall under the same example of unbelief. What example of unbelief? <coughs> Excuse me. In the wilderness, when they didn't make it into the promised land because of unbelief. Let's continue. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. <coughs> Excuse me. Hebrews 11. And then we have one more place after this. Hebrews 11. And brother, pick it up at verse 39. Now in this chapter, this is known as the faith chapter. You got Abel and Enoch, and they're talking about Noah and Abraham and Sarah. They're talking about Rahab the harlot and Joseph and Moses. How they were obedient to God's voice. And it was accounted unto them for righteousness. And they did this by faith, in faith, through faith. So now verse 39, brother. These have all been found faithful. They all died, so to speak, in Christ. In other words, they're Christ at His coming. 11 and 39, go ahead. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. But they didn't get the promise. They didn't make it into the kingdom. Every one of them's in the ground. Every one of them's turned back to dust. If you were to dig up their graves or their sepulchers, all you would find is dust and remnants of bone, maybe. Go ahead, brother. Verse 40, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. So they without us, those that died righteous before us, would not get the reward before those of us that are still being tried, and those that will be tried after us if the Lord doesn't return. We're all going to get the reward at the same time. You, and you get the, the reward of the first resurrection when Jesus comes down and starts to return. He's going to wake us all up, and those that are alive will get our change. We'll meet him in the air and come back with him. And we'll all get it at the same time. And then those that make the second resurrection, that judgment or the second resurrection, the day of judgment, everyone will be at the same time. They'll just be standing in line and waiting for their time to come up and be judged. Last place, Luke the sixth chapter. Luke 6. Luke 6. And we're going to read one verse, brother. Verse 5. Luke 6 and verse 5. Go ahead. And he said unto them, that the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. And Jesus said unto them, that the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. The Sabbath day. So this was part one, the Lord's Sabbath day. Sisters and brothers, we hope that you join us for part two, the Passover. And we thank you for the opportunity to rightly divide God's word. And hope you got something from these scriptures.